Shadow Blazer here, and it's been a week since I started doing this marathon, and what a way to start off the new year. Today, we are going to be reading the finale of the Littlest Pet Shop Creepypasta Fails Trilogy. The finale of the trilogy is called Littlest Horror Shop. Very original title you got there, author. But judging by this title, I have a feeling that this pasta is going to be very good, so I have very high hopes for this creepy pasta. Let's start rating. You know the show Littlest Pet Shop, right? You thought that it was all sweet and innocent? Well, you thought wrong. Here's my story. It was Wednesday, the middle of the week. My friend came to my house after work and saw a tape on my doorstep. It said, Littlest Pet Shop Lost Footage, written on it in Sharpie. I found out that later, this footage was from one of the episodes of The Hub Incorporated. That was going to be aired. Uh, it failed to be broadcasted due to horrific graphics. I laughed and my friend told, and told my friend that it was fake and never believed it. I wish I did. So... We put in my tape recorder. We, we put it in my tape recorder, and I made some popcorn with some cheddar seasoning. We were all settled, and he pressed play. Why does this remind me so much of a parody of The Ring? Are we seriously that creatively bankrupt to the point where we're just ripping off stories from horror movies and other nefarious stuff? Are we seriously going that low? Anyways... The intro started off simple until the actual show played. All of the pets were in the grave instead of the day camp. They were sad, I don't know why, but right past Russell was Zoe's grave. Me and my friend looked at each other in shock. That was a very str this was a very strange episode. Blythe came by and put some flowers down. Of course the episode would start off with the characters at a funeral, cause that's what all creepy bosses do! They begin a funeral scene, or they begin at a funeral scene. Just why can't they just try doing something original for once in a lost episode? Is that too hard to ask? Then it cut to Blythe's mind, where there was a flashback of Zoe singing on the stand by a window in the left front side. She was singing a new song, but it was unnamed. Then someone broke into the shop and knocked out Mrs. Twombly before shooting Zoe and ran out. I had no idea why only after the shooting everyone screamed and ducked. Okay, so this creepypasta was the story that Lilith's Pet Shop Puppets was trying to rip off. So it was a ripoff of a bad story that is a ripoff of a horror story. So, I mean, considering the fact that there are, the robbery scenes are very similar to one another, especially the parts where the pets die, be, and, I mean, and besides, who would be fucked up enough to rob a fucking pet shop and kill the pets? I mean, I mean, I know one person, but that's for a project that I'm gonna keep confidential for now. Zoe had unexpectedly realistic blood, except it was more like black ink. I was horrified to death. Okay, what is with these stories trying so hard to add hyperrealism into their episodes. Sure, Squidward Suicide did that, along with Dead Bart, but that doesn't excuse the fact that you should add hyperrealism in every creepypasta that involves a lost episode in some way. That just makes you look extremely lazy. Anyways, let's continue. An ambulance came and took Zoe to the vet's emergency room despite their efforts. They said that she couldn't make it. Zoe's owner blamed Blythe for their pet's tragedy. Okay, come on. Why would you blame Blythe for your dog's death? I mean, Blythe wasn't mentioned in this story until now. Uh, the screen went to black, and there was a blood-curdling screech. The screen cut to a scene of all the pets, Miss Twombly, Blythe, and her father murdered. It was gruesome. They were bleeding, skinned, and had empty eye sockets and multiple stab wounds. Ugh. Great. Now we have more to add to the fucking blood counter. God damn it. Anyways. The screen then cut to black again. Then the screen came back with a shot of Zoe with a splotchy, 
dark looking fur coat, blood on her mouth and chest with irritated blue pupils. She was so horrifying that I felt like throwing up. She said in a weak voice, You're next. Then, the episode ended. My friend was screaming and running out of the house. I just stood there in shock. Are you fucking kidding me? Anyways. Then, the screen cut to static, which made me jump. After a minute, the static noise cut to crying and screaming. I tried to lower the volume, but nothing worked. I thought my ears were bleeding. The screen cut again to Zoe, looking at Pepper's lifeless corpse. Pepper's, uh, the first letter in Pepper's name was, uh, not capitalized, so taking points off for that. Anyway, Zoe was crying and she murmured to herself, I, I I'm so sorry. Oh, th th this story better not try to, you better not try to ripping off a better Littlest Pet Shop creepypasta on us. Yes, I know this story was made since, like, 2014, but the story was different than the one that I read back then, so it was edited in some way. Ugh. The screen cut again, but with Zoe staring at me, no sound or movements. I felt every hair on my body raise, followed with a cold shiver. It was her same look, only this time I tried running to my room, but I heard Zoe say, where are you going in a deep demonic voice i turned my head and she was coldly looking at me i was so shaken i took the remote in my hand and i threw it at the tv and it broke i okay yeah that's a very rational thing to do break your tv not j just because of a fucking lost episode when you can oh i don't know change the fucking channel or unplug the tv i don't fucking care just don't break your TV. It's going to cost you a lot of fucking money. Anyways, I breathed with my relief that my TV turned off. Of course it turned off because you fucking broke it. You threw a remote at your TV, you fucking idiot. At 9.35, I went to sleep. I only to hear loud noises coming from my kitchen. I bolted out of bed and I was shocked about the mess. Then I, the thought of Zoe came to my mind, but I decided to be naive and pass it off as a raccoon, so I decided to clean everything up and walked down my dark hallway, curled up in the covers, and went back to sleep. My god, my god, I can't believe this motherfucker is trying to rip off the ring and is trying to pull the, um, the character that I saw on TV is trying to kill me in real life cliche, which again, is the oldest trope in any creepypasta. It's not scary, it's pathetic. Anyways, I woke up from my sleep at 10.47 a.m. Damn, I went, I slept that long after going to bed at 9. I shrugged. I turned my way, I turned my wall only to find blood writing on my wall. It was e messily written with excessive blood, saying, I'm so sorry, with a paw mark stamped next to the writing. Are you fucking kidding me? Blood writing on the wall? Are you fucking kidding me? Is that how low we're going today? Oh my god. We're seriously going to be stooping that load in order to add fear to into the audience. Why are these stories trying to emulate a horror movie rather than an original fucking story? Like, are we seriously that bankrupt for ideas? Like, are you fucking kidding me? Anyways. I was horrified. I called the cops, the fire department, any fucking detective I could find. They found no clues, no evidence, and they thought I was pranking them. They gave me a good five minute lecture and left my home with, with a warning. You know, if I were the detectives or at the fire department or anybody, I would probably arrest this motherfucker and put him into the in insane asylum because, you know, if someone were to come come and call me and say oh this cartoon character is trying to kill me I would probably drag them to the nearest insane asylum in their area that's a rational thing to do anyways I felt sick to my stomach is this really the end is this how my death is planned out I thought to myself I couldn't move for the rest of the day everything was quiet I just sat on my couch I never went anywhere I just sat there like a brainwashed zombie. Why does this remind me so much of the grieving? Sure, it's a great story, but 
I don't get why many creepypastas borrow elements from that story. Instead of, oh, I don't know, doing something original for once! I know I sound like a broken record at this point, but it frustrates me that people cannot come with original stories! It was 10.57 that I got up and went to bed. I felt nauseous from my lack of food. I went under my bed sheets and got warm, just staring at the wall, getting paranoia from every tiny noise I hear. Then knocking came at my door. I lazily got out of bed like a child getting up for school. I opened it and I looked down and I found a photo with Zoe sitting next to one of her victims. It was my friend. He was there, bloody and mangled, his gouged out eyes and organs. But Zoe was actually there. Okay. This reminds me so much of Fluttershy's lullaby, which again, isn't that good to begin with. Anyways, it looked like it was taken with an HD camera and the walls were written with the same excessive blood for the, except for the wor words and paw prints. They were different and they read, you're next. I looked at my friend next to the devilish dog in sheer awe and disbelief. I heard giggling in my house, I screamed, and I went to the kitchen, grabbed the lighter, went outside, lit the goddamn photo. After it was burnt to a crisp, I put it out with mud and then I went back inside, but I found yet another photo laying in my kitchen. But the picture was different, and words were as well. Zoe was in her same eerie look. The image was took right outside my house. Right on the picture, there was a Paul written words that said, I'm coming for you. And then I thought to myself, I'm going to die. I know it. Hope luck for yourself. I sit here in my room writing this story as a warning to all of you. The tape is still loose. She's coming... She's coming to other people's homes, dropping off the tape. If you find it, chances are you're already listed next. Watch it or not, she'll kill you. I just heard my front door opening. Now I know it's the end for me. Farewell to all of you. And I hope this message can be taken seriously. Goodbye. I am so sorry. Sayonara. Adios. Your story or your message won't be taken seriously because this story sucks. Where do I begin with the story? I know. How about the fact that it rips off multiple other creepypastas and multiple horror movies at once? Especially with that whole sequence with the whole Zoe's coming to my house to kill me fiasco that plagues the end of the story. It's all just a giant mess. But that's hopefully the last Littlest Pet Shop shit pasta trilogy that I'm planning on making. I think that I would like to do a little bit of a mini ranking for every Lilith Pet Shop shit pasta in this marathon, from best to worst, so that I can pad out this review. At number three, we have Lilith Horror Shop. This one is just an awful creepypasta that borrows heavily from other creepypastas and other horror movies, which prevents me from taking this story seriously. But if there is one thing that I do like about this story, it's the fact that it has at least somewhat of a semblance of a plot. But I can't really say that as a compliment because, you know, it rips off other creepypastas. But I can't really say the same about the last two. At number two, we have Littlest Pet Shop Puppets. I already said what I need to say about this, both, bo both this and number one, but I'll just repeat them here. This story is a shameless ripoff of Littlest Horror Shop. And as an episode itself, it had very little substance. Bl However, Blythe going insane and using the pet's corpses as puppets is a neat concept, but the execution just leaves a lot to be, as be desired. And at number one, we have Littlest Pet Shop, episode 666, Goodbye Mitzi. Not only is this a runner-up for the worst title for a creepypasta in this marathon, but it's also the worst title that I have ever read in creepypasta history but the story is just awful very little character development very little substance in the story and very little motivation for the character's actions and any motivation is just there to move the plot along nothing more nothing less which makes this creepypasta which makes goodbye mitzi 
the worst littlest pet shop creepypasta I have ever read. Honestly, all of these littlest pet shop creepypastas I have read in this marathon are very perfect examples on what not to do when writing a lost episode creepypasta, especially when it comes to a creepypasta based off of littlest pet shop. I mean, sure, you can say whatever you want about my recent story that I've written for my channel, but at least I put a little bit more effort in my story than what these writers have done for any of these stories. If you want a good Lilith's Pet Shop Creepypasta, then I think that AU de Pepel alternate ending is a much better way to spend your time reading. Hell, I can make a better season of Lilith's Pet Shop without having any experience watching the actual source material than these writers do writing an actual story when it comes to Littlest Pet Shop. <sighs> Anyways, what do you think of this creepypasta? My final rating is a 0 out of 10. This is Shadow Blazer, and I am out. Hello everyone, Shadow Blazer here. If you like this story, then feel free to like, comment, and subscribe to my YouTube channel. I hope I didn't scare any of you guys too much. Anyways, if you guys have any suggestions for creepypastas that you would like for me to read, then feel free to comment them down below. And feel free to hit the subscribe button if you want more creepypasta readings. Anyways, this is Shadow Blazer, and I will see you guys soon. <laughs>